Welcome to my book Inspiration here on Hana Live. This is the show where we're going to be interviewing movers and shakers of our country as well as beyond our borders, people who are doing incredibly well in their various industries and we're basically just going to get to find out a bit about them as well as what the book has done for them. The value of reading. Why should one read? And a lucky person is also going to end up winning a book from our guest here today. Welcome to my book Inspiration, the show that's all about profiling our movers and shakers and also talking about reading as a source of inspiration. And on the show today on Hard Alive, we're joined by, uh, I want to call her a radio veteran before anything, you know, so I'm going to throw that in. But yes, she's a radio personality. Uh, she's also a brand ambassador and a businesswoman. Her name is Tapon Tole. Tapo, thank you very much for joining us on Hana Live. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Very well. All right, great stuff. I want to talk about your radio journey. So let's just go back to where it all began. Where did it begin for you? Well, geez, it started um, right after I finished school, um, which was a long, long, long time ago. <laughs> um, I, I decided to start work, you know, just in between type of thing with uh, an organization called PSI. And those are the people who, you know, um, are responsible for Lovers Plus and all of those things. So I was a peer educator. And then one of the big bosses came down from Canada and, you know, um, you know, we had a big meeting, he just pointed at me and said, you're going to do our radio show. You know, they had an ongoing radio show. Um, so yeah, I think that's where it, it, it the bug bit, as they say. Um, I did the two radio shows on a Monday and on a Saturday, and I worked with the likes of DJ Fresh at the time. And, you know, um, yeah, so after that, a few years later, um, I'm minding my own business, you know, and there were um, auditions for a particular radio station and I was like okay you know what let me just go and try it out and uh, right after I finished the first audition there was an, there were other auditions for yet another radio station that was opening at the time so I went and tried that out as well I got two jobs I, I was accepted for both you know um, those two radio stations happened to be Yarna FM and Gabs FM so at 19 I was like okay where do I go um, who do I go with you know um, they called both of them called me and at 19 I made the very interesting choice of going for an adult radio station and that's how my radio journey began 16 years ago I think yeah so um, and a year after I started with Gabs FM they felt that we were that me and a bunch of other people we were too young for the radio station so I got fired can you imagine <laughs> so that's when my journey with Yaruna FM then started um, somewhere in 2001 or so and you know at some point I was like you know what maybe radio isn't for me you know so in 2004-2005 I left radio completely um, actually 2004 and went and pursued other things that um, included event management because I I love putting things I, I like organizing I'm a perfectionist I'm you know I'm very particular about things so I thought maybe these this is the path that um, I should try you know and I did that for a while, did the Miss Popana 2005, did other projects as well, and then 2006, Gabs of Him called me back, and since then I've been on radio, behind the mic. So radio found you, and radio just loves you, but can we talk about, you know, attaining the kind of longevity that you've had on radio? How does one get that? I think being uh, very awake um, um, about your surroundings, um, being, being, actively aware of what's happening um, you know I remember moving into uh, a house and I didn't have a TV and I was very okay with that it's funny we were talking about books I'm a big reader I was very okay with that but then at some point I was like but I'm out of touch with what's happening in the world so um, I have to get a TV so it's, it's, it's all about wanting to learn around uh, about what your surroundings wanting to know about you know um, um, uh, affairs you know in your country worldwide and also being true to who you are you know um, I think the one thing that I always say especially with the new crop these days is don't try to be anybody that you're not you know um, honor who you are if you are a quiet person but like talking if you like music um, you know honor the true person that you are simply because people connect with what is authentic I think that's the most important thing and um, that's that will guarantee longevity. 
I think that's that's the most important thing, being true to who you are. People connect with what is real, because if you're not real, it phases out. It it, it bl the candle blows out uh, at some point. While I learn to put up a front of some kind, you know. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And how far do you plan on taking your radio journey? Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, as far as radio um, wants me, you know, but I think the, the journey is nearing, is nearing completion. I want to be honest. I think um, I've done my bit, you know, um, I still love it. That's, that's, the, that's the fight you have, you know, you still want to, you still wake up and you go to the studio and you still want to express yourself, you still want to have an opinion of some sort, you still want to connect, um, you know, but I think I can't do this forever, you know, this is not the end all and be all because I think as an individual you have so many talents and some people never get the opportunity to explore them um, and others do and I think, I think it's time again, you know, because when I left initially in 2004, it was that voice in me like, is this enough, is this it? I'm 24, is this it? You know, and the, the answer kept saying, no, this is not it. So I think I'm there again. I've come full circle yet again, and I think it's time for me to um, do other things. I'm not saying I'm leaving yet, you know. <laughs> this not is not yet. an announcement. No, no, this is not, right. no, this is not an announcement. It might take a year, it might take two years, yeah. but I think it's just, it's, it's, yeah, I'm there. Okay. Yeah. Speaking about exploring your other talents, let's talk about you as a businesswoman. Right. Let's go right into that. Like, you know, you uh, you mentioned earlier that you've been into events production and yeah. management. Right. You know, you're a PR uh, you're a practitioner. I'll call yeah. you that. So please just get us into that as well as you know what. As a businesswoman does, it's not easy. It's been quite an interesting journey. Sometimes I have no, like I just, guys, this is I can't do this, you know. Um, but I think wanting to own your time is something that I've wanted to do. I mean, since I was young, um, you know. Sometimes you have a passion, and you want to pursue that passion, but the business side of it, um, you have no idea about it. And I think over the past years, I've been learning. To get into to get into you know the whole business side of running an events management company you know um, um, and and running a, a complete business you know so um, I've been in business as uh, expense management for close to about 14 years now um, but you know you do it and you're like okay when there's an, a, a, a client who wants something you'll run around and do it over the past few years over the past five years is when I've just said you know what let me actually get my books in order let me actually run this um, um, into something that will leave a legacy so it's it's um, startups are not easy you know you're always there's always one challenge after the other um, I've mentioned Miss Botswana uh, 2005 I did that um, I did the coca-cola um, FIFA World Cup trophy tour when it came when the World Cup came um, to Botswana I was running that I was facilitating that I've done Oprah magazine tea parties in Botswana I've there's so, so there are so many high highlights for me but um, until I can actually say it's a fully fledged business um, then yeah I think that's when I'll give myself a pat on the back and I was actually this is the last book that I, was, I, I finished reading just about a week ago and you find that women like um, Diane von Vostenberg also had the same challenge where you're running a brand for so many years but only up until two, 2011 has it actually been a business that makes sense and yet this was a brand that started in the 70s so I, I connected with that that's one of the books that uh, and that's one of the the individuals that um, I connected with so it's a journey it's a work in progress um, but it's getting there yeah let's talk about you as a brand ambassador I think you know being a brand ambassador is something that every radio TV personality or every celebrity really every entertainer yeah. you know strives for because that's a point where now you believe I've built a brand that I'm now commercializing right. so yeah let's go into that um, me going into radio was a Fluke, like you said, radio found me, and for me it was always get the room, you know, as a nine-to-five type of thing. And I never considered myself as a personality, to be quite honest, you know. It was never something that I woke up and said, okay, you know, I'm a bonang. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it was all about, it was all about the fact that I enjoy music passionately. I've got uh, things to share with people, um, and I never really thought as, uh, of myself as you know, somebody that people actually look up to. I never honored 
my uh, calling, you know, I never honored my greatness, as it were. Um, and then Options, so many years ago, gave me a call and said, we want you to be the face of Options, when I did Ignash. I'm like, oh, okay, so cool, you know, and that's when actually Brand Ambassadorship, nobody knew anything about it at the time, and we were, you know, it was a year's contract, I think it was, and uh, me becoming the first face of a local brand, now you think about it and you're like, wow, that was big. Yeah, that was huge, you know. And years down the line, you then grow into yourself. You then realize that you, this is a little bit bigger than you. You know, it's not only about you. It's not only about you uh, talking stuff on air or whatever. Um, it's about somebody looking at you and saying, I want to, I want to do as she has done. You know, I want to walk into her, into, into her shoes, as it were. And then you realize eesh, the responsibility becomes a little bit more. So I think as I was, as I was get, growing into myself, opportunities then started um, coming up. And I got a call from um, a brand, um, spa brand. And they said, look, we, we like the way you carry yourself. We like the way you, you do things. So can you become our brand ambassador? I was taking a little. I was taking a little aback. I was like, "Are you sure?" You know. Um, but I've taken it in my stride, and I think, and I per se. I'm not like one who fusses over things or fusses. I, I, I obviously I make an effort to look good. I look. Uh, 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 I make an effort to, you know, be presentable. Be, be presentable. But I think it allowed me to take it a notch higher. You know, because I'm representing a huge brand. It's continental. You know. Um, and you then realize, growing older, you, you, you allow yourself to be comfortable with who you are, what you like, even if Hawana doesn't like it and you're friends with Hawana. Because as you grow up in your 20s, you're all about what a group mentality. So as you grow older, you realize, Tapo, yeah, you do heels, but to a certain extent, you know, you realize that comfort for me, comfort comes first. I'm a very chilled person, I'm a very easygoing uh, person and I think I, I want that to reflect in the way I present myself. You know, so that and and I want I, I want Tap on Sole the brand to be approachable. It should be an approachable brand, and that's that's pretty much how I dress. I think um, that's pretty much how um, I, I I I sit around a table and I want people to feel that and to to be drawn to that. We're still hanging out with Tap on Sole, who's a radio personality, a brand ambassador, as well as businesswoman, uh, on my book Inspiration right here on Hana Live. Let's quickly go for a break and let's meet on the other side of this.